What would happen if everyone around you told you to stop following your dreams? Today, I was blessed to dive into the mind of a top striker in the college game and learn what it takes to play at the highest level. This is Patrick Ajiman, a 6'4 striker from East Hartford, Connecticut. He started off playing for Division III side for Eastern before moving to the D1 game at the University of Rhode Island. He's a three-time Atlantic 10 Player of the Week, a Division III All-American, and was recently selected in the 2022 MLS Showcase. Patrick revealed the truth on how he beat the impossible and explained how his path led him to play semi-professionally and follow his dreams. What was life like growing up? Growing up, I was always kind of surrounded with my family, in particular my brothers. We always were outside playing soccer, running around, just having fun with each other. Most of the time, we would link up with like our cousins and our friends that were still really close to now and just do whatever we thought was fun. Soccer kind of brought us really close together, so that's what we were all focused on. And it was a good time. I obviously started rec, I think I was like six or so. There was a travel team, we started for Hornets, so I played there when I was like 14, I think. Then I started getting into the Premier side and I played for it. It was a small club, it's called Hartford Premier. I tried out for CFC and I, I didn't make the team. Did you play any other sports growing up? I ran track when I was younger and I ran track throughout high school as well. I played volleyball. Volleyball is so fun. <laughs> so what steps do you think led you to become like a college athlete today? Uh, I think it was just commitment. I always told myself, I was like, I want to just keep playing as long as I can. And whatever opportunity presents itself, I'm going to take it. My brother, he ended up playing for Springfield College. He's kind of like someone I look up to when it comes to soccer and just the, the path. And when I seen him go to college to play, I was like, I want to do the same. So have you always been in the same position? I started as a center back. I didn't even know what I was doing, honestly. I was just like, okay, I'm not trying to let them score. So I'm just going to kick the ball up. As time went, I was one of the quicker guys on my team. I was always really fast. They put me right up for it and I started playing forward and I was like, whew, fight scoring goals. And I was like, I like doing this. When I got into high school, I had an issue with my hamstring and my groin and I couldn't run as fast as I could. Everything was so tight. So I played midfield. I played like center mid for probably like an eight. And I was playing that position throughout high school. When I got to college, they put me left wing and then I played, came back to forward. So it was like, I was bouncing everywhere. What about your family? Did they have any success with athletics? In high school, I think my brother Enoch, he didn't play college soccer, but he was a really good defender. Um, Emmanuel, he went to Springfield, did okay there. And he came to Eastern where I was at and he did phenomenal. I think he got like all region defensive player of the year, like all these little accolades that to him didn't seem serious, but it was big time for him. Man. Actually, a strict coach, and he put me in check. And we had problems for so much, like the whole freshman season. But I did well. I ended up scoring. I think I got rookie of the year. But if I'm gonna compare it to here, here you gotta focus so much more on deep little details. In college soccer, it's like in Division One college soccer, it's not really much, much weak points as you would imagine. Especially when I was here, I realized that these kids are strong, fast, and they know how to play. So it's kind of like adapting that mentality that you may lose this game. Eastern, I went to games and I'm like, no matter what, we're probably gonna win. And th that's how it was. I wouldn't even stress about games. I'd be like, when I go on this field, like I'm gonna beat these kids, or we're gonna beat these kids. But here, everything you have to prepare mentally, physically, you gotta relax yourself because you don't know what's gonna happen when, it, when that whistle blows, so. What do you think it was your biggest challenge like, on and off the field? Um? Maybe just consistency. You have those games where you're not your best. And I think at times I kind of let those games get to me. You just put a lot of pressure on yourself. And I tended to do that all the time. Sometimes you have to realize there's 10 other players with you for a reason. Did you have like a, like a real big struggle other than um, injuries? Throughout the spring, I had a couple of issues where I came to probably like jumpers knee or something. And it's like, when you try to jump, it hurts a lot. You try to plant to shoot hurts a lot and I still have it now and I was doing rehab PT and I was getting better and I was like oh I feel improvement and right when the season's about to start I sprained my ankle so I told myself it's okay it's not that big of a deal because at the end of the day both my ankles were already sprained so it's like I kind of knew how it was the season was going I got I felt progress and I was able to get back on the pitch so I was like okay we're good we're good Penn State comes come off the bench and I feel myself getting back into like the rhythm I'm feeling good I'm creating chances I'm feeling like I'm gonna score pulled my hamstring and that's when I was like I think it is a blessing and a curse because the whole season, I couldn't shoot with my left foot. When I go into my left foot, that's my most dangerous foot to shoot off of. That's your dominant, right? Not even. My no, right, not even. Like, my right is dominant when it comes to, like, technical stuff, but striking the ball through clean is my left. To have it taken away from me, it was like, oh, like what do I do now? I kind of fought through adversity, and it made me realize how much I truly like this game and love this game because I was able to play through stuff like that. So. What are your favorite things to do for fun outside of soccer? Something I picked up is going on walks. I love going on walks. There's a little 
little river on this side, go to walk over there, sit down. I think that's something I love to do. Playing the piano as well. I just go on YouTube, find a song I like, and I just want to learn it. And that's like something I love to do. And obviously that's hanging out with my people. The social part is so important. They keep me in check because they're just so driven. And I'm like, I want that same thing. I want that same driven. But they allow me to have fun with them and keep me in check. You know what I'm saying? If footy's not going well, I know I got my, I got them, you know? Do you happen to like FIFA at all? Or FIFA, yeah. I think FIFA is probably not so much as now, but I think every FIFA till 16, 17, I was addicted. <laughs> I couldn't stop yeah. playing. When the draft came out, couldn't get enough of it. So did you find like more success with like school or like club soccer? I don't think anything started till college. Damn, not even that rec championship, huh? Not even that rec championship, man. I think a lot of times I was just looked as an underdog kid. Not many people knew who I was and that's okay. But when I got to college, I was able to kind of express myself more and I think I developed as a player even more because when I was in high school, I wasn't as good. I wasn't really that good as a player in my opinion. What did your training schedule look like growing up? I think I didn't have a real training session, like a real, real training session until I got to college maybe. Obviously high school as well. High school was like, it put me into structure, but I didn't really have like individual training. So I kind of was just a talented player in a sense, but I didn't have the little details done. I kind of find myself a little different than players where they've been through the technical stuff when they're younger, so they know all the technical stuff. I had to learn that, but I was using different things to kind of make up for it. It's weird. I kind of look at it like I have things I could do that could kind of differentiate myself in ways just because of the way I grew up playing. My training was just having fun, do little passing stuff and then play. I was literally training. I loved it. Wouldn't change it for nothing. Outside of footy, I think my dad, I looked up to him a lot because that man is hard working, man. My mom as well. Those those two are, I call them crazy all the time because they just put so much like pain and like hours into just making sure me and my brothers were okay. I always tell him like I got him because the things he's done is, is crazy, man. Working so many jobs and just still trying to come to my game. Like, what are you doing? Go to sleep. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the love piece. Um, With soccer, I loved Drugba, Henry, and Zaha too. I like Zaha. Do you prefer like cold weather or hot weather? <laughs> I hate the cold. It's something that I hate with a passion. Balls are rock. My toes cold. People stepping on my toes. What about playing in the morning versus like under the lights at night? I love the night. The thing is about the night, it takes so long to get there. If I could um, get up and play like I used to, I love the morning. My restaurant was kind of unique. It was because of the COVID season and I transferred right when the COVID season came. The season was canceled. So I came here, they implemented that and said, we'll put you as a red shirt. Cause technically I was a red shirt, but I wasn't. But a red shirt pretty much is someone that maybe they had an issue before the season started. They didn't play that much and they want to have another year to play. How important is, is height for a striker? Very important, man. My height is so important because it gives you a benefit, but you do get chopped a lot. That's what's tough, but in the the physical aspect if you understand the ball with your feet because it's harder like when you have the ball at your feet it's harder than someone that's lower than you they're closer to the ball than you are in terms of Western Pioneers, Jordan helped me get there. It was strange because I was like, whoa, I was nervous. I'm like, there's like 50 people here trying to try out for the same team. Am I going to play? Like, you know what I'm saying? I went there for vibes. I went there and enjoy myself, but also I wanted to play. I was like, I want to I want to start. First couple games, I was trying to make my name, but they had kids there that already made their name. So, you know, you're trying to overwrite their name, but it's hard to overwrite someone's yeah. name. So I took my time, played, enjoyed, enjoyed. And then I think first home game came off the bench. When I get on the field, I got to do something at least. And I scored. I was like, Phew. so after that, I kind of had a good season like they put me in a starting lineup i was playing i was assisting doing these things i think i had like seven goals seven assists i think me and jordan has a clip we have a we have a clip where he played me this through ball and behind a national semi-final or something like that and i chipped the keeper but it was it was insane it was crazy i enjoyed it man what are the attributes you think are really important for a striker i think awareness you got to be aware of your position who to exploit and what runs to make a lot of times you're making a run but the ball's not coming to you but it's what that run is doing against the players at times i wouldn't even look at the ball i'm just looking at where the defenders are i'll just keep checking my shoulder see the ball checking my shoulder and seeing if the defender's stepping up on me or not and i'll make that run just goal scoring that tick like it just has to be there you have to be able to score goals and be confident in score goals. The strikers make the most money because what the goal is is to score goals. And who's going to try to stop you? The defenders. And that's why they're going to be in your ear. They're going to be saying these things. They're going to say your, your shit. They're going to say your chips. You're going to say you suck. But you got to like show them what you could do. You got to have that IQ. You got to have that unique physique and what you can do different and how you create chances for your teammates. And then you got to score the chances you get. Did you have any like scary moments in your career? Yeah, man. Bro, I have like the scar on my knee and I was like nine years old. Something cut into my knee when I was playing soccer with my cousins in my backyard cut right through 
like this service scar now and it was just i was nine i was a kid i didn't know i thought my soccer career was done i was panicking the doctor said like if it was a couple inches higher it could have done severe damage to my knee and that scared the mess out of me bro my mom was praying for me and all this when the doctor said it to her i didn't even know until after i healed it would have destroyed my knee and i was nine years old and when i look at that i'm like i'm so blessed because i don't know what how my knee would be now maybe i can't even play no more maybe i could play but with a limp do you miss being away from home it's different it was so tough because it was COVID and I didn't want to see them because I, I was scared I had COVID. It's still kind of hard, but I'm aware how important this opportunity is for me. What's your favorite versus least favorite part about being a college athlete? Least favorite is probably time management, the stress and anxiety that comes with everything and just the extra pressure you get. I feel like I have no time. Like This is a joke. Some professors, if you have good professors, they give you leeway and they help you like, oh, no, I understand. Like You could do this and I won't do this, right? Some of them aren't like that, though. And that's the problem <laughs> where I struggle because I'm like, ugh. Bro, I remember I was at Eastern and we're playing in a game. We went to overtime. And in my head, I'm like, dog, I have a whole assignment to do. And then after the game, I scored like, I think I scored the game winner, like first ever like game winner. After that, I grabbed my food and I ran to my room and I had to do my homework. Yeah. After a game like that, I said- You're like, you want to chill, right? Exactly. I was like, what is this? But yeah, the time management is tough, man. It's tough. You're given this opportunity. You want to show people what you can do. You want to showcase your talents. But sometimes that doesn't happen. So now it's like your mind. You're like, am I really good? Why am I here? Da, da, da. But you're putting so much stress on yourself because the season is like two weeks two three games a week is crazy you want to do something but it's not it's not feasible college bro you're not eating you're not eating right you're not sleeping right you're not you sleep know. you're never gonna sleep right you try to ignore the fact that you're not getting the right things for your body it grows on you it's like it's like a tab it just keeps yeah. going and now you see your bill you're like damn at the end of the year and stuff people get burnt out Remember, my teammates are burnt out everyone's like i'm tired i'm done with the season and it makes sense like it's hard i think favorite part though is just the fact that get to play once that ball is with me there's nothing on my mind and i think that's where i realize that's my passion nothing compares to when i have a ball on my feet it's like the only stress i have is <sighs> i can't breathe like i'm tired you know what i'm saying i kind of admire when i'm tired because i'm like at least i'm playing at least i get the chance to play there's people that wish to play that just can't play yeah that's why i always look at it i'm like you know there's people in wheelchairs that literally can't walk so it's like you know i get the opportunity to play you know i really reflected and i'm like dog i am so lucky where i come from and stuff like that this does not really happen it's probably one or two people that it happens to i put work into it but it's luck man it's so i'm so lucky it's hard work and luck you yeah know? man the reason why i'm here is because one of my best friends Derek, brought me here we became good friends and he realized that i was a good person and then he wanted me to come with him like it's little things like that but that's luck what if i never met him you know what i'm saying my coaches do a good job. We try to travel a couple days before and then get there for a whole day, relax for a whole day, and then game. So I think that was good. The tough part is when you go, you're most likely going to be on a bus for a long time. And being on a bus is the hardest thing ever, man. How important is that nutrition for you? Yeah, nutrition before was not a big part of my life. I think still to this day I have bad nutrition, but it's just it's just kind of the access I have. I think I kind of I made it better. When you're at college, you gotta eat something. Like you know, when you're always on a movie, you're trying to just eat something. I stray away from like the really fatty foods, but there's still foods I eat, like chicken tenders and fries. I'm eating that. You know what I'm saying? Like I still eat that, but when I can, you're gonna see me with a salad. You're gonna see me with pasta. You're gonna see me with, like pasta and chicken, rice and chicken. It's like when you're aware of it. With my water, I'm drinking water. Do 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 do. I'm making sure I drink water. Obviously, I'm gonna have a couple of juice and stuff like that, but like now I've been really focusing on it. What do you think is your proudest moment so far? I think being a Division Three All-American, I never would have thought that would happen. I think when I came here and got first team out conference, because I really wanted to like show people I could do it. People didn't believe I could do it. And I wanted to show, I was like, bro, it doesn't matter. I play D3, I could do it here. Yeah. This past season, I was on the Matt Kermit watch list. That blew my mind. I think another one was just being able to play my brother. And I think he brought the best out of me too. The fact that he was there, I was like, I just want to win yeah. with him, you know? That was the All-American season. And he got our region because we were just together balling like balling so would you be in school if it wasn't for soccer i think i would have been in school because my parents are so big on school they struggled to build a foundation and they knew how important a foundation was they set us up for success i would never say i grew up struggling because i never did i just knew that they struggled to put us in the position that we are with education it makes things a little easier so i think i would have automatically been in school but i do find myself as a crafty guy but i know that i would have done something out of school for sure is there any secret to like scoring goals in your 
your opinion? I think visualizing. Every game I go into, I promise you, when the song's going on, I close my eyes all the time and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna score on this goal or I'm scoring this goal. Am I gonna do this or this? And I open my eyes and I'm just like, I'm gonna score today. I don't know what, but I'm gonna score today. It makes me really believe I'm gonna score even though I don't have no chances. I'm like, I think I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? It's just being confident in your ability. When you get the chance to, I say this all the time, breathe, relax. When the chance is there, relax. Why do you stress when you have the ball? That's the best part of the game. You want the ball. You only get the ball for three minutes a game. But what do you think you're planning for the next five to 10 years? The next couple years, man, I hope to play. As long as I'm young, why not? I only have one life, right? Obviously, like, I would want to try to play after school. To what level? I'm not sure. And maybe I find my passion while trying to pursue my dream. Do you want to be a coach one day or? I don't know. Maybe if I'm a soccer coach, I'll be a youth coach, but I don't really think I would even want to do that. I think I'd rather be like a mentor in a sense. Growing up, man, people were saying I suck. Like, I'm never going to play. And that's just how it is. I used to let these people's opinion define me, but I had a handful of people that really believed that I could do this and everyone else saying like, what is this guy talking about? But in my mind, I'm like, I'm going to play. Like the way I say, I'm going to score, I'm going to score. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. Just day by day, man. Taking it in stride. What's one piece of advice you'd give to yourself if you were 13, 14, or 15? Just keep going. God got you, man. And I will always live like that because I always doubted myself so much. Like my stories kind of like make people realize that you can do it. I used to be like, God, how come like these guys saying this? But in my mind, I think I'm going to be one of the best players in the world. I try to have a firm relationship with God because like he's done so much in my life and it's crazy. And like all the people I'm around, like they're just so focused and locked into what they want to do. And me, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was just like, I'm going to keep playing and hopefully it takes me somewhere. So I think just keep going and realize like I got you, man. Relax. And I think like this too, it's like if you are really determined to do something, you're going to get luck into it. If you're really focused and you work hard for something, even if you don't know what it is, something's going to happen that's going to help you. So right now, like enjoy the fact that you're stressing about something because the ones that aren't stressing are the ones that really should be like yo why do i stress about things that are so down that's just gonna give me anxiety it was like a quote or something where it's like if you focus on the, the past that's how depression comes you focus on the future that's how anxiety comes so i focus in the present it's a gift and i'm just like Phew. There's another quote I can say is, um, isn't it like, we plan, right? Um, but God laughs, so. And when it comes to my hamstring, my ankle, I'm just like, God, what you doing right now? Because I was like, you know the season was so important for me. What you doing? It's like, you know what? Let me just be patient still and really trust your process. Because this guy's been doing so much in my life. And just the fact that I'm even in this room with you, man, it's a blessing, bro. I tend not to realize, like, how much I've been through and stuff. When I sit down and talk with you and stuff, it's like, I realize how much you've been through as well. You're grinding to do something as well. And it brought us in this room to have this conversation. Thank you. Patrick for sharing your story. You're truly a legend and I wish you the best with Charlotte and the MLS. But if you want to hear the story of Patrick's longtime friend and teammate Jordan, then watch this.